Greetings fellow DMs. This video, by me, Derek Lycan 101 is for you DMs only. If you're a player and you have no intention of ever DMing, don't watch this video. This is not for you. I need your DM card out right now. I'm looking for it. If I don't see it, I don't want you on here. Secret. Only for us DMs. Players, sign off. Okay, now that they're gone, let's get down to business, DMs. I'm going to share with you a secret. A secret that no one really likes talking about. The forbidden subject of DMing. Splitting the party. Oh yeah, I'm going there. Trust me. I know, I know, some of you are like, whoa, whoa. We don't split the party. That's a no-go zone. Guess what? I'm going there. Let's talk about it. Splitting the party. What does that mean? For you new DMs. Splitting the party means... While I have six players, and they're all in a dungeon, two of them want to go to the north, two of them want to go to the south, one wants to go west, and the other one wants to go east. Some DMs say, no, all of you got to go pick a direction go the same way. Not me. I like it when parties split up. Why do we always feel that we have to have them all go one way, or why is it always commonplace that they have to go one way? Simple. Because if it's a dungeon and they're going to go separate ways, there's a lot of stuff that could happen. There could be traps, there could be monsters, there could be story pieces that you know certain members of the group will miss out on because they're all going different ways. That's not a bad thing. At least I don't think so. So what if two guys go off and they pull some aggro from a bunch of goblins in the caves? What, so what if you know some guy triggers a trap down the way and now flames are spewing down the sides of the hallway and he's like uh sorry guys what happens when that one guy that went west finds a treasure chest and it's loaded with gold and magical items good for him what about that one guy that went you know east what if he just blundered into the you know the big bad end guy what if he stumbled into the boss you know, sucks for him sorry dude but uh all these different things can be going on. And sure, you know, it divides the party, makes things more complicated on your part. But that's where you as a great DM skill comes in. Personally, splitting the party sometimes, not all the time. You know, I'm not saying every time they go somewhere, let them all just roam free. No, no, no. Sometimes. Sometimes. Use this in moderation or whenever you feel it's necessary. Let them have their fun. And then you get to throw your little GM card on the table and be like, Bam! That's what happened. So, when they do split up, why is that good? Because think about any movie that involves multiple characters. Personally, I always think about Lord of the Rings. We have all of the Fellowship. Let's just say, for example, the ones that are alive after you know the events of Fellowship of the Ring. So let's just say we're in two towers, right? We're in the two towers. Where is everybody? Well, we've got, you know, Gandalf eventually coming back. That's a separate thing. We've got, you know, uh, Sam and Frodo. They're doing their quest on the ring thing. Uh, then we've got Gimli, Legolas, and Aragorn. They're doing their hunting thing for Merry and Pippin, who are doing something else. That's great. Now, while that is a very wide scope, you know, by no means do that. They're each doing something different. That provides them their own story moment, their own things. Well, yes, they're a group. They are still the Fellowship. They are all on a different path. They all have different motivations. So let's continue with this example that I'm establishing. They're in the cave. That one guy that found the treasure. What if he's the rogue? Good for him. That's story development. The rogue did went his own way, did his own thing, found some treasure, and he is going to keep the best parts for himself. Good for him. There's nobody there to question. He could then close the lid and then walk back and never let anybody know he's got these magic items that he's later going to fence at town. Yeah, he could have stopped the guy who went south and, you know, started that flame trap. He could have stopped the flame trap and then that could have been an easier way to walk through. But he's got magic items now. What about the guys that, you know, pulled the aggro from all the little goblins and they're being chased? Yeah, that's a harder encounter for them. If they're low level, or maybe they're just a bunch of goblins. You know, but that's okay. 
having them fight it out. Only they get to say, yeah, well, dude, we just took down like 25 goblins. What did you do? The rogue could be like, oh, I just found an empty corridor, when secretly he's laughing to himself because he found a bunch of magic items. Uh, the guy who's in the flame trap could be like, um, guys, I kind of blocked our way that way. We can't go that way because there's fire. And they'd be like, aw, dude, fire, really? I'm weak against fire. Really? Uh, something like that. What about the guy that found the big bad end guy, the boss? What if he's held prisoner now? Perfect. More incentive for the guys to quickly go, um, where'd so-and-so go? And then they gotta hunt, they gotta find him. And then more incentive, more story. Sometimes by splitting the party, you create such an interesting way for your story to unfold. A more, I don't want to say cinematic, but a more movie quality experience. You allow character development, you allow personal growth, uh, both as a player and as a character. And by, well, that's what I mean by personal growth. You allow for yourself to grow as a DM, it allows for improv. It allows for increased skills in setting up your uh, mission beforehand. It allows you to test certain areas that maybe they wouldn't have overcome or seen if they'd all stayed together. Uh, it allows for everything to unfold in a different way than you had originally planned. For example, in one of my last uh, sessions that I was able to do with a group that I have basically put on hold because I had moved and gone off to college. Excuse me. I left this group on hold, but I left them out. I went out with a bang. Giant cinematic battles, mass combat, and bunch of stuff. What did I do? I let the party go wherever they want. Do whatever they wanted. I had um, a gnome professor who was basically, it's basically the equivalent of an alchemist, and he had crafted a flamethrower. I let him craft it. And what does he say he wants to do? And by the way, he has a dog just that he rides around on. So he's got a riding dog. It's him and a riding dog. What does he say he wants to do? I want to go outside the gates. I want to sit, stare down that impending army. And I want to guard the main gates. Okay. What does everybody else want to do? The cleric says she wants to go up on the walls. She's going to heal archers and keep everybody alive up there. Good for her. What does the dragon keeper want to do? Uh, well, he wants to go by the artillery and make sure he can start shooting out a bunch of dudes with giant balls of, you know, cannons, or not, excuse me, not cannons, but catapults, and then he wants to make sure that nothing happens to that side. What does the rogue do? The rogue wants to go pillage the fortress they're using. Of course, uh, it's a rogue thing. I mean, why not? And then what does the fighter want to do? The fighter is trying to organize the troops that are uh, there. What does the paladin want to do? He wants to pray for a moment and, you know, get his center. That's great. You know, that all happens at the same time. But then as the battle starts, they all are separate now. They're doing their own thing. The cleric winds up on the back of a demon and is flying over the enemy army and slowly using burning hands, or the equivalent, I guess, of her cleric, and slowly burning off the eyes of the demon. And then she's stuck in the middle, it crash lands and dies, and she's stuck in the middle of the demon army. The little gnome up front has used his flamethrower to create an arc, a wall of fire around the main gate that has pushed back the enemy. And slowly they're like, one at a time, jumping over the fire to try to get at him. And then he has to fight a guy that they met in the first session by himself. And then he has to do it all alone. That's something only he can claim. The cleric can, can claim that only she was out there in the middle. The dragon keeper goes crazy and winds up summoning a bunch of dragons and uh, like little mini ones, not like giant reds and stuff. That would be ridiculous. Anyway, he summons some dragons and now the army has like a little another army to fight and that's something only he can do. You know, he can only claim that. It's story development. It's character development. Personal growth. It's all of these things. But would that all have happened if I split the party? Maybe. But I guarantee you it would not have been as exciting because in those moments that they're split up, you say, okay, cleric, it's your turn. You still keep initiative. Cleric, it's your turn. You're out in the middle of the uh, in, in the army and on the back of a dead demon. They all turn to you and you're about to get attacked in a million different ways. What do you do? And then, you know, 
She tells you what you're going to do, and you're like, oh, hold that thought. And then you turn to the next guy. It's your turn. What are you going to do? You're in this situation. You know, the you're, you use the flamethrower, and now they're one by one jumping over. Let's roll your two rounds of combat. Okay, pause after you kill that enemy. What are you doing? You leave these cliffhanger moments in their brain where they're on the edge of the seats going, but, 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 I'm in the middle. And then you're like, oh, yeah, you're in the middle, but so is he. And so you build this tension and it's this moment of action and combat and wonderful story and secrets and action that only they can claim. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, DMs, splitting the party isn't such a bad idea sometimes. I know we all say it and players alike say it. Never split the party. Guess what? I'm here to tell you. Sometimes splitting the party's okay. Just saying. I'm putting it out there. If you feel differently, if you want to say, no, stick to the party, it's group dynamics, role playing is all about being in the group, post a comment. Post a response video. I would love to hear what everybody is think has to think about this. Personally, I love splitting the party. When one guy says he wants to go one way and the rest of them go somewhere else, golden. Golden. I love it. I've had so many experiences and encounters where that's happened. I've had a group of people stay behind to look through a closet of, you know, look for secret passages and look for treasure inside. I've had, and at the same time, somebody goes to further explore, and then another guy goes and, you know, pulls uh, aggro on a giant night hag, and she picks him up because he's a halfling and tosses him against the wall, and he goes flying back down the hallway, and everyone realizes, oh crap, what just happened? Because only he saw it. Uh, all these wonderful story elements and just so many wonderful memories that I have and encounters and experiences and ways that I have personally evolved as a GM have come from splitting the party. So, this has been a quick video, sort of quick video, it's almost 12 minutes, have been my ideas and my thoughts on splitting the party. It's a secret only for us DMs. Keep it to yourself. Share it with your other DMs. Don't let your players know because if they knew, oh, think of the chaos. Only for us DMs. Hope everyone has enjoyed it. Just my thoughts. Glad I could talk to you guys about this. Have a wonderful day. And remember, split the party.